Uh, well, uh, cervical screening has actually been around for decades, and I think it still worries a lot of women and their partners. Uh, many of the patients that I see in my practice come with their partners because they're anxious uh, about their uh, smear tests. Um, the current uh, status is that around 95% of smear tests are actually normal, they're negative. So we're talking about the 5% which might be abnormal, i.e. they are positive. In the UK, this may be different in other countries, the screening for cervical uh, abnormalities is done through what we call uh, HPV testing, human papillomavirus, high-risk human papillomavirus testing. And that is the primary test. If it's negative, nothing else is done because the view is that this is the virus that initiates changes in the uh, cervix. If it is positive, i.e. if the um, uh, woman has a uh, high-risk HPV type, then a sample, a smear sample on a slide will be prepared and that will be examined. And you have to remember that the uh, abnormal smear tests tend to be um, a reflection of precancer. Cervical screening is not a test for cancer. It's a test for changes that may lead to cancer if nothing is done about them. And any woman who has a test, who either continues to be monitored and checked or who has treatment uh, would be okay. And of course, the monitoring and the treatment is done through a facility called the colposcopy, where we uh, have a camera, a magnifying system, and where we can see the abnormal areas, we can see their size, their position, their nature, and that will allow us to take a biopsy, send it to the lab. And that is the diagnostic test. The smear itself is just a screening test. It's just a warning sign, uh, rather than it's something that uh, is, is a sure uh, diagnosis of any problem. So women have to follow up the screening test the smear test with an examination or a chat with a consultant or with their general practitioner. Well, they are not uncommon. So um, the abnormalities occur in about 5% of cases. Now, they could be a range of these. The most important and the most common are changes in the cells that may mean that the woman has Precancer type changes on the cervix, not cancer. And these are very uh, preventable and treatable and manageable. And probably around 4% of smear samples that are done will show one or the other of these abnormalities. So we have a mild, we have a moderate grade, and we have a higher uh, uh, abnormality grade. But all of them, you have to remember, are within the skin covering of the cervix and therefore can be quite easily seen and quite easily treated. And that I think is something that is very important. A smear test can also show some infections. For instance, thrush candida infections can sh show on a uh, smear test. Herpes, as a matter of fact, has features and we rarely get a report which says, oh, this, these cells are showing some herpes type changes. And, and this we need to contact the, uh, uh, our patient and um, examine her and give her the right treatment. A small number of samples are what we call inadequate. So women should not be worried when they get a report which says your sample was inadequate, meaning that there were few cells which were picked up during the taking of the smear sample uh, for the lab to give us a report. And in these cases, she simply needs to wait for three months to have a further checkup. And if there are more than one inadequate samples, then a colposcopy would be indicated because the colposcopy in a way is the ultimate test. It's a diagnostic test. And if the smear, the cytology is not picking up uh, uh, an abnormality that we uh, can understand, uh, a colposcopy would be the right thing uh, to do.
We now know that the human papillomavirus, which is a, a widely spread in the population, there are a group of human papillomaviruses which are called high-risk groups. And these are the type of uh, viruses that cause changes which are precancerous in the cervix. There is also a group of uh, human papillomavirus, HPV, which is low risk, which causes genital warts. Uh, usually in young people, you can see them in both men and, and women. So the cause is the human papillomavirus. And if you look at cancer of the cervix, in 99%, 99% plus of samples, you will be able to demonstrate the human papillomavirus. So that is why the primary test is checking for the high risk human papillomavirus. And of course, that is decreasing worldwide and definitely decreasing in this country. A recent report uh, for um, uh, England showed a 80, England and Wales, as a matter of fact, showed an 87% decrease in people having abnormal smear tests because of the HPV vaccine, the human papilloma vaccine, which currently is uh, applied to uh, teenagers aged between 11 and 16, usually 11 and 12 and 13, both girls, teenage girls and teenage boys. But the good news is that women can use the vaccine uh, beyond that age. And it is available if any woman thinks that she is at risk and wants to protect herself from that. Or if someone has had an abnormality, has had treatment or the abnormal abnormality cleared, and they want to protect themselves for the future because they've shown a vulnerability to um, being affected by the virus. Well, uh, obviously you need to take action. That's the important thing. So an abnormal smear test is a screening test and you need to take action. If the action is to have the smear repeated, you need to put it in your diary and have your smear repeated. If the action required is to have a colposcopy examination, this examination which we uh, in, in, in our private practice and in, uh, in the NHS do quite frequently, uh, then you need to do that. As long as you are taking action and as long as you are in a system which either keeps an eye on or treats these abnormalities, you should be completely safe. Uh, a lot of women think that the, a positive test means they have cancer, and that is not the case. Technically, 99% plus of cases we see in colposcopy are cases that have a, an abnormality which is within the surface of the cervix, what we, uh, what we call cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, CIN, uh, and which we can either monitor and see whether it regresses because in low grade, in, in mild cases, the regression rate is about 80% or we can treat it by just removing the abnormal area. The cervix will usually heal and will actually uh, clear both the abnormality and the human papillomavirus effect. So the important thing is to take action, not to worry. Worrying and not taking action is absolutely the wrong thing to do when you want to prevent uh, serious uh, disease happening in the future. The definite answer is no, it does not mean cancer. It means that there are cell, uh, changes in the cells on the surface of the cervix, which if you ignore them, may become cancer. And the time for that is as long as 10 years. So a person, even if they think, my God, I've got something abnormal, uh, you know, something will very bad will happen, such as cancer in the next two to three months, that is not the case. However, the system in most of the Western world essentially says that if someone has an abnormal smear test, they should be seen fairly quickly. If the abnormality is what we call high grade, they would be seen within two weeks. If the abnormality is otherwise low grade, they still would be seen within uh, six weeks. And therefore, I think it is important that a woman attends uh, her appointment or seeks um, uh, advice within that sort of period of time so that she is reassured. A plan is, is put together to either say we will monitor this or we will treat it. The woman would know the frequency of these uh, 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 follow-ups, will know the nature of them, can also be advised about taking action 
to reduce uh, the risk, to protect the cervix, to improve the immune response of the uh, area that is affected. 